Hey everybody, you're back in the kitchen with Mike and Lisa. Yep, yeah, once again. Yep, yeah, what's up on today's agenda is going to be... Uh, English muffins. We're going to make us some English muffins. So yesterday, I uh, smoked a couple of our hams, some bacon, and some Canadian bacon. So with Canadian bacon goes... Egg McMuffins. Egg McMuffins. <laughs> yep, so, so we're going to make some uh, homemade... Uh, copycat Egg McMuffins. Thomas's English muffins. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So with the muffins, the first thing you have to do is uh, get you one and a quarter cup of warm water. This is at about 110, 111. So that should be perfect. To it, we're going to add one tablespoon of sugar. Sugar, sugar. Stir it up really nice. Get it melted. And then we're going to add one teaspoon of uh, active yeast. And then we're going to let that set covered for about 10 minutes. Let it do its thing. I guess we should have checked our yeast. We keep it in the refrigerator, so. Yeah, the warm water and sugar should get it activated yeah. really quick. We're just going to sprinkle that all on top of it. Cover it. And... 10 minutes. All right, so we will see you back in 10 minutes. All right, so it's been a second for you and 10, 10 minutes, minutes for, for us. us. <laughs> so let's, oh yeah, she's nice and bubbly. Uh, oh, you can already smell it. I do smell it. Yep. So now we're going to add uh, two tablespoons of butter or oil. We're using butter because butter makes it, it better. better. Yep. Oh, I'm so excited for these, especially going to be our homemade uh, Canadian bacon. Yes. And then one uh, teaspoon of salt. Then we're going to add two and, and three, three quarter, quarter cup of flour. Now we're using bread flour. Uh, I don't know if it would matter. I think the protein content is a little bit higher in this, so it tends to stick just a little bit better. I'm sure you could probably use whatever flour you have, yeah. I guess. We tend to keep all flowers in the house because we do a lot, so. Here's our three quarters. Two, three quarters. And of course you want to have some on hand uh, when you're mixing this thing up. If it's sticky, you know, it's really sticking to the bottom of your mixer or if you're hand kneading it, uh, just add a little bit of flour so it doesn't stick so bad. That'll help thicken it up. And if it's too thick, you know, start with a tablespoon of water, add that in. Yeah, kind of adjust as needed. That's what I have to do when I make my homemade pasta too. Is it's it's more of a feel thing sometimes when you're making this type of stuff. Yeah. And we can't describe to you really. It's hard to say. Yeah, it's just something you're just gonna have to get yeah. used to. If you experiment, you do it long enough, eventually you'll have it down. Yeah. We're we're still learning too. Every know. day. Yep. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna throw this thing on two. And hopefully we don't get a cloud of flour. Yeah, anywhere. please. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, let it knead for about three to five minutes. And uh, we'll come back when it's ready. Yep. We'll be right back. You can see how the dough's not sticking to the side. It may stick a little bit to the bottom. As long as it's really not sticking to the side, that's about the right consistency. All right, go ahead. So once, <laughs> once it's done kneading, uh, you're going to put it in a oil bowl, like they oil it. Did I say bowl? Yeah, let's turn that off so they can hear us. Yeah. Go ahead. We're going to put it in an oil bowl. A lightly oiled bowl. 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 <laughs> Can't talk. And then uh, we're going to cover it and let it double in size. Uh, should be somewhere about an hour or so, depending on your heat and humidity in your kitchen. I'm excited. Yep. We'll see you back here in about an hour. All right. All right, you guys. We are back. And Mike is so, going to uh, get this dough going. So it's been an hour. And you can tell she she's doubled in size, so we're just gonna take it out, 
get it onto our We're almost to the yum yum part, guys. Yeah, you can already see the air pockets forming in the dough. Well, I don't know if you can see it. I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to knead it a few times, uh, roll it out to a log, divide it into 10 equal-ish pieces, uh, and then we're going to flatten them out after we spread some cornmeal on some parchment paper and uh, call it good. While you're doing that, should I sprinkle some of this? Yeah, sprinkle that. So just a little kneading. You can tell it's very, uh, I don't know, spongy. Spongy. Kinda, you know, it's got, got some give to it. So we're just gonna roll it into a log somewhat. Crazy. It doesn't need that much, baby. Well, that's what I was thinking too. Once I put it on there, I was like, I don't know. I've never, I'm generally not the bread maker in this family or any of that sort. So, we're just gonna split yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> Let me find something to put that in. Ah. Here, we'll just split it down. You know how many pieces? What's that? How many pieces are you making? Uh, ten. She gives me two a day, right? <laughs> yeah, looky there. I won't have to. Well, I don't have to, but I won't. I won't be needing to make you any breakfast this week. You're making your own breakfast this week. Yeah. It definitely make it easier if they just did it in eights. You know, right. because you could do half, four, eight. Right. Well, I guess if you want them bigger. Oh, yeah, then you could just do them like that. And just do them in eight. So, yeah. Let's see what we could do with this. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just make it bigger. Call I'm just going to do four. Eight. Yeah. Okay. This one I did five, but I don't think they're even. All right. Well, I'm going to let you <laughs> sprinkle yeah, so, the cornmeal. <laughs> so all you're doing is trying to keep them from sticking. Uh, so just a light sprinkling is all you need. Something about there. Plus, Be like Mike, not like Lisa. <laughs> uh, and then all we're going to do with the dough is we're just going to tuck it. Full tuck, full tuck, full tuck. Just form a ball. You know, however you want to do it. You can... See, he's really good at all this stuff. I'm not. You wouldn't want to know what mine turned out to look like. You can do it like that. And, so uh, pretty! <laughs> yeah. And all you're going to do is you're just going to smush them down until they're flat. About uh, an inch thick or so. So, you know, a piece of parchment paper on top of your hand, whatever you want to do. So I'm just going to tuck these in, start getting some tension on the top. Then we're just going to roll it in a ball, kind of pulling it forward and rolling it, pulling it forward and roll, pulling it forward and roll. See how it starts to form a ball? They all going to fit on that? Uh, I kind of doubt it. Oh, got a tuck. All right, so he's going to get the rest of these formed. We're going to figure out where we can set them because they're going to do another rise. Uh, about, I think, a 20-minute set rest. Okay, so yeah. he's going to get these all rolled out, and then we're going to cover them with a towel again. Yep, cover them with a towel. And, and uh, about 20 minutes. About 20 so. minutes, and then we'll be back. Yep. Here we go. We are at the cooking part. Yay! <laughs> So you're gonna, I guess, go ahead and cook up all the, um, what are they called? Muffins, McMuffins. English muffins. English muffins. Yeah. So I guess you're gonna cook, get all those cooked up, and then yeah, we can probably we'll fit about three on our pan. We've got, I think it's a 10-inch lodge griddle, and uh, just set it for low. 
Uh, you're going to cook it eight minutes one side, flip it, cook it five minutes the other side until it's done. All right, we'll go for it. Yeah. Um, I guess you can just put them back on this tray. Probably. That would work, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't see why not. Yes, you can kind of see the different sizes he went with. Yeah. And um, instead of doing 10 out of it, he's going to... I think 8. He's yeah. going to do 8. Yeah, these these are the 8s, and this was kind of the 10. Yeah, and you can see the difference, so... Yeah, you know uh, what? I'm a big guy. Yeah. <laughs> I can't well, be... I mean, we're making our own Canadian bacon, so we can make it any size we want. If you're yeah. buying Canadian bacon... I guess we'll see once they cook. Yeah. They might expand, they might not. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. One forty five. What do we need to get to? Uh two hundred ish. Uh two hundred ish. Yeah. If you get if you get the heat up too high on it, all you're gonna do is burn it before the inside gets cooked. Right. Depending this is on how thick you made them all yeah this is raw dough yeah right. it's not like you're baking them you're right. frying these things so all right pans preheated uh we'll get let's say we can get three or four of these the little ones the little guys on there oh so much for not sticking come on cornmeal Guess we should have left the amount I put on the paper. Yeah. Uh -uh. Yeah, we can fit three of those on there. All right, well, while he's got those frying up, I'm going to pull out the Canadian bacon yep. and uh, start getting that stuff together. So we'll be right back. I don't know if the camera shows it well enough, but they are definitely starting to get poofy. folks <laughs> copycat egg mcmuffin, egg McMuffin. homemade english Home, muffin homemade english muffin home cured and smoked canadian, canadian bacon, bacon. Home, eggs grown eggs <laughs> yep so the only thing here that's not ours is the cheese processed cheese <laughs>
Ooh, I hope I don't burn my mouth. Just remember, folks, in moderation. Mmm. Mmm. Ain't got nothing on us. Mm -mm. Oh. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's not really that much work to make your own homemade, but if you don't want to, you can always just go to the store and get some. Yeah. Yeah, but. And plus, now he's got breakfast for the week, so. Yep. That Which makes it even better. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> and, you know, you don't have to raise your own pigs to grow your own meat. Go. You know, go to the store, get you a boneless pork, pork loin, and cure it yourself, make your own Canadian bacon. Or, You'd be amazed at the flavor yeah. compared to buying it. Another thing, you know, is like, what well, we raise our pigs, but we don't raise our beef, uh, yeah. but we get it from a local farmer. Local farmer. So, you know, that's always an option, too, is go find your local farmer's fresh eggs you can't beat, so. Yeah, they're, they're awesome. Yeah, so... All right, guys, thanks for joining us again in the kitchen, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's very good, baby. So good. Mm.